In this video, we'll be going over Le Chatelier's principle, which states that if you do several different, if you change several different variables, you can affect a reaction's equilibrium state. So you're, you, uh, you basically do these three things and you could disturb equilibrium and cause the reaction to shift one way or the other. So let's start our video here. So um, if you change, First of all, if you change concentration, then you just kind of messed with the uh, the final equilibrium amounts, and you're going to affect. You'll actually establish like a new initial set of conditions, and so you're what you're doing is you're you're making Q unequal to K. As a matter of fact, you're making Q. This is kind of like Le Chatelier's principle. Is is you could kind of rephrase this as things you can do to cause either Q to be less than K or Q to be greater than K or in other words Q to be not equal to K anymore so like you're you're affecting the equilibrium condition and then you're gonna cause the reaction to go one way or the other to try and reestablish K to try to reestablish the ratio that the equilibrium constant. All right, so changing concentration this is the first way to do it. So increasing a reactant or product will make the reaction to shift the other side. And or decreasing a reactant or product will make the reaction shift to which side what which to that side which was decreased. So here's an example. Here's a practice question. Um, we have two moles of SO2 react with one mole of O2 and they make two moles of SO3. So which way will this reaction shift if S to SO2 is added? So if more of this is added, so let's say it's at equilibrium. If you have more of this, then so again you're gonna you we could be looking at Q here. So we'll have um, products over reactants. And what we just did was we increased this number. So what we're going to need for this to reestablish um, K is we're going to need this side to go up and then this side to go down. So if this if the d uh, denominator increases, um, it's going to make this this will cause Q. If the uh, so if SO2 increases, um, it's going to cause Q to be less than K. Um, and so when that happens, we have too much reactant, so it needs to shift to the right. Okay, now now this qu the next question says, which way will it shift if SO3 is added? So this time, if I add SO3, uh, what I did then was I made the product too high. So if I do that, so if, if SO3 is added, I made Q greater than K. So to make it reestablish K, it needs to go to the left and create more of these. So over time, O2 and SO2 concentrations will increase, and this side will decrease. So this will go up, and this will go down. So to get rid of that problem, this goes down, and this goes up until it gets back to Q. So it would shift to the left in, in, in that case. So let's try another example. So which way will it shift? erase my scratch work here and uh, which way will it shift if SO3 is decreased so if this amount goes down then my product side goes down and then in this case Q will be less than K because this side is it has just become smaller so I need this side to go up again so um, to replenish what was missing this will create more product so over time, this will go down, and then this will increase over time. So this reaction will shift right to try to make more SO3 so it can get back to Q equals K. So it, we need to raise the value of Q by increasing more product, and then it can equal K again. So there's two other things you can do. Um, the next one is probably the, more, the most, uh, the most uh, tricky one, but it's not really all that tricky we just kind of go step by step so if you change the pressure by changing the volume um, so what this will do is uh, first of all you need to look for this only applies 
only this effect only applies to gases so be on the lookout for substances with parentheses G um, so um, let's say we have a let's say we have a gas and it's under a this cylinder here okay and there's a certain amount of pressure acting on it um, now if we uh, reduce if we reduce this pressure acting on this okay then this will expand and then the volume the same gas molecules will have more volume so when you have less pressure so when pressure goes down then volume goes up um, what this will do is favor the side that makes more gas molecules so we could summarize the pressure change like this so if pressure increases this this actually is um external pressure like on like if if this were in a vessel um and it's it's better i found that it's much better to think of this one as a volume change so when you have an increase in pressure that makes the volume go down um and this will create less space for the reaction and therefore um, the reaction shifts to the side with um, less moles of gas so it's it's trying to accommodate the fact that you have less space so the reaction will try to make fewer gas molecules to try to fit into the less amount of space um, and conversely, if the pressure decreases, this implies a, a bigger volume, so you have more space for the reaction. And the reaction will then shift to the side with more moles of gas. So we have to add up all the moles of gas on each side and then compare. So let's look at an example. We'll use the same reaction as the last one. So we have uh, same reaction and we'll try to address these questions. So this is really the key. So you have to count how many moles of gas there are on each side and then try to think of this, okay, like a volume change. And then is it going to, does it does the volume increase or decrease, does it favor more moles of gas or less moles of gas? So when you have more space, you, we, we favor the side with more moles of gas, and less space favors the side with less moles of gas. So um, we have 2 plus 1. So we have 3 moles of gas on that side, and then we have 2 moles of gas on the, react, uh, on the product side. So now we'll try to answer this question. So which direction will the reaction shift if, if pressure is increased? And uh, I, I should actually um, specify, so external pressure, like let's say this is all happening in this, um, like a this um, enclosed vessel with like an adjustable volume. So if external pressure is increased, this implies a um, smaller volume. Okay, so this, this all means that we have less space. So if we have less space, it's going to favor the side with fewer moles of gas, so it's going to favor the right side. As we see, there's only two moles of gas on that side. Um, and then which reaction, which way will it shift if pressure is decreased? So that would be like this situation here. So if we have less pressure, that would mean um, a, bigger, a bigger amount of space. So this means more volume. And again, I should write specify. Ex think of it as like external pressure. So if we have a bigger volume, um, then we have more space, so it's going to favor the side with more moles of gas. So it would shift left in that case. Okay, um, there's one more thing you can do to shift the equilibrium during uh, in a reaction. So if you change the temperature, um, now in this case, I'll put a note here, you'll need to know
if the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So if it's exo, then heat would appear. You could think of heat as appearing on the right side as like a product. So if it's exo, then heat is a product. And if it's endo, you could think of heat as being a reactant. So the, the reactants like require heat in order to go make product. So I think you could guess what's going to happen. So adding heat will, I just put this, adding heat will push the reaction to the other side. And then you have to take a look and see if it's exo or endo to see which side it will shift to. So let's look at this practice uh, reaction. So this this uh, dissolve or this decomposition reaction requires heat. So we see that this is endo. Um, and so now let's ask a question. So which direction will this shift, this reaction shift, if it's heated? So it's kind of like the first the first uh, one that we looked at with concentration. So if you add more heat, you could think of heat as like actual reactant. If you add more heat, this whole this whole system, it doesn't like it. You could think of it as like it doesn't really like all that heat. So it wants to remove heat. How do you remove heat? Well, you start reacting with this and then you shift that way. So it won't so you'll actually like consume all that heat that's being added. So this will be going to the right if you did that. Um, and so now we need a new reaction to look at um, an exothermic reaction. So this reaction says, which direction will this one shift if it's heated? As you see, um, the reverse process will require heat. So if you heat this reaction, heat is on the product side. So if we look at this from going left to right, this will be exothermic. So if we heat this one, um, the NH3, this ammonia gas, it will eat up all this heat and then go this way. So it has like extra heat. And this whole system, it doesn't really like all that extra heat. So in an attempt to remove all the extra heat, it needs to react with it to consume it and then go this way. So it'll shift left. So um, it's just really similar to the concentration effect. Like if you add it or take it away, then it, it will do... It will adjust. It adapts to the situation by either removing it or or making more of it. So let's let's try this. Um, actually, let me ask uh, one more question. So that I didn't I didn't have like pre-made on here. So on uh, on this same reaction, we could ask. I'll put C. Uh, which way? Which direction? would this go if you cool it down? So, in the, let me erase my scratch work from the previous question. So if I cool this down, I am removing heat. And, and in this case, heat you could think of again as on the product side. So if I remove heat by cooling it down, then these guys are gonna react and make more product where heat is and in an attempt to try and raise heat back up. So if I cooled this reaction down, then it would shift to the right to, in an attempt to replace like the heat that was move, removed. All right, so here's an example for you guys to try. Um, hydrogen is used for um, ammonia production, and it's produced in this reaction. So anything, if you ever see stuff written uh, on the top or bottom, it just means that this process requires a catalyst and a, a high temperature for this reaction to work. So um, try to answer the following, and I'll see what you guys come up with. So if, H, so if H2O is removed, what would happen? Which way would it shift? Um, so you, our choices are it, it will shift to the right, to the left, or there will be no change, like or, or no, uh, no direction change. So if the temperature is increased, and then here they tell you it's endothermic, um, if an inert gas is added to the reaction, then which way would it go? If CO, carbon monoxide, is removed, and E, if the volume of the container is tripled. All right, so let's see what you guys um, come up with on, on this uh, problem.